And all right, we're recording. How are you doing today, Pat? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing really good. Um, I just got back from the, uh, what's it called? Meridian, Meridian Celebration Fest or whatever. Okay. It's in Okemos and took the kids and the wife and we went and um, they had like like bounce mm-hmm. houses and all kinds of stuff and food. Oh, yeah. And uh, actually, one of the ladies that was on the podcast before, her, her name's Erin Meadows. She's a local person. Okay. Um, she has a catering business. Um, actually, I don't know if it's catering, but it, it, it's kind of catering. Like, yeah. she meal preps and everything for people, but it's all, like, whole foods and everything. Oh, wow. I had this uh, chicken wrap thing. It was so good. It was probably one of the best things I've ever had. <laughs> so, so does she have like a truck or something set up there? No, or? no. She made it prior and then brought it. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. It was, she just had like a table and yeah. small little setup. But yeah, it was it was amazing. Sounds good. Yeah. Blew my mind. So anyways, um, are you from Lansing? I know. Uh, I live in Lansing now. I grew okay. up in Mason. Okay. Most of my life in Mason. But, you know, I think, you know, I was born in Illinois then lived in Kalamazoo for like two years while my dad finished up school and then lived in Mason since then. Okay. Yeah. How did you like that? It was okay. It's a, it's a nice, I think I was talking about with my mom recently. I was like, I think it was like a nice place to grow up, but it's kind of um, it's maybe not as like open-minded as, you know, I would prefer to live in now. Is it because it's like a small town? Like, yeah, I think that's probably, you know, I think yeah. it, there's there's definitely like maybe, it's maybe more conservative than like a Lansing mm, yeah. <laughs> or you know, yeah. something like that. Um, I mean, I, I, I just, like I was just talking about like when I graduated in 2000, the year 2000, and I remember there was like a lot of controversy because some kids wanted to start a gay straight alliance and like the town and the school were like, oh, we can't, can't touch that. That's, <laughs> that's too hot button. And then like my sister graduated five years after me. And I think by then they had one, but then like when they wanted to put a float in like the homecoming parade, they're like, oh, well, we can't have a, uh, have that in the town. <laughs> can't be too inclusive. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, yeah, okay. You know, and then like. I, I'm in like uh, the Facebook group, the what's going on in Mason group. And I just see like <laughs> occasionally people will be like, oh, so we're celebrating Pride Month now, but we can't have the you know, <laughs> fill in the blank thing that I want. And right. It's like, well, it's not an either or thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a wild thing, right? Like, I mean, and we're seeing it even more and more, especially like after yesterday's thing yeah. with the uh, abortion. But I grew up in Charlotte, so okay, it was yeah. it's kind of the same con- same concept. And I'm also in a group uh, called "What's Going On Around Charlotte." Yep. <laughs> and I see some of the same things, and I know one of the things that they they have to deal with is race. Yeah, and, and Mason um, has the same. Yeah, but yeah. and it, which is weird because Mason's not that far from Lansing. No, but Charlotte, like, it's kind of secluded a little bit. Um, but I remember when I was in school, there was like I think I think there was like three or four black people that went to school. Yeah, it's probably about the same. And, yeah, it's probably about the same. But you know, they still they still deal with a race problem. You know, like people calling them the n words, and yep. uh, somebody was just telling me about a situation that just happened, <clears throat> where uh, a black kid was getting bullied on the playground in in Charlotte, and their solution to um, to the bully incident was to take the kid out of recess and have him stay inside. Jeez. It's like, what? So we're punishing so him for getting... segregation is your solution? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's like, what? What? It's wild. Yeah, maybe punish the people doing the bullying. Like, right. I, yeah. Yeah. What about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know, man. Yeah. Crazy times we live in. For sure. <laughs> now, uh, the listeners probably don't know, but you're a comedian. Yeah. So... How is how is that with living in today's times? Do is it like just a? Do you have like a arsenal of material because of everything going on? I mean, I don't know. I I, I mean, I I guess I'm politically you know I have my I have my political beliefs. I don't necessarily try to work them into my jokes. Not not because I don't believe what I you know don't practice what I preach or anything. It's just <laughs> like I I don't know. It, it it's hard. For, for me, it's like if I'm going to say something, I want it to be funny too. I think there are yeah. some people who are better at like taking their their belief and making a joke about it that people can laugh at, even if they don't agree. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. So, so for me, you know, I I felt like, 
you know, the, during like the Trump administration, I'd maybe take like, you know, shots at him, but not that <laughs> nothing too like. <laughs> right. You know, I felt yeah. like a lot of people took shots at Trump. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was like one of those things because it was so easy to make fun of him. Mm -hmm. I mean, I because I feel like, you know, Clinton and, and Bush got it a lot, too. And you know, oh, I don't yeah. know. It was harder to make fun of Obama, it seems like. But I mean, I'm sure that <laughs> he was too well put together. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Like his big. Big scandal is he wore a tan suit or whatever. And yeah. why, what? Yeah. Why is that a scandal? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. I mean, so I feel like Biden's getting it now. So oh, I don't yeah. know. Like I, I, I just try to like I do the jokes kind of the that I want to do, and I haven't worried about how to make like political stuff funny. But you know, just with yeah. like the way things are going, part of, like maybe I should try to <laughs> you know work on that a little bit. So. I want to ask you about joke writing and all that stuff, mm -hmm. but I kind of want to go back and get like your, your backstory on when you started comedy oh, and yeah. uh, what got you involved in it? Yeah. Because I mean, it's such a, like, I mean, you're, you probably started a while ago, right? Yeah. I've been doing it for 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, but well, like, I guess I, I, I just liked stand up comedy probably like, middle school you know is when that kind of started i i mean i i would see any what was on like comedy central or mm. if there was ever something on like you know tv that like i don't think we didn't have hbo so like wherever you would see comedy specials i'd i'd watch pretty much anything um you know obviously like like some things more than others but i was like i liked that a lot um i was really into like the simpsons and um Comedy Central used to show like four hours of old SNL episodes, so oh. I'd watch that stuff, and I think that just like really, you know, like you know, I think so. I was probably in like seventh or eighth grade when we got cable, and we were watching it. So I was like, you know, thirteen, <laughs> just like that's like my brain was just like, okay, your if this is what's coming in, like it's gonna <laughs> have its effect. Right, so, right. Yeah. Um, this episode is brought to you by Red Bike Delivery. This delivery service operates only using battery-powered, eco-friendly transportation. Red Bike Delivery is there for all your delivery needs, whether it's dinner for the family, flowers for your partner, or new houseplants for your new collection. Red Bike Delivery will gladly deliver those and everything in between. So what are you waiting for? Check out Red Bike Delivery on Facebook or Instagram for more information. Red Bike Delivery, because there's only one Earth. So, like, when I went to... When I was in high school, I saw like uh, I went to a talent show. I didn't I didn't perform in it, but I like saw some of my friends in this talent show, and someone did like uh, they acted out like a, sta a Bill Cosby stand up bit, like as a skit. And I was like, oh, I, I would like to do something like that. And then like they never had the talent show again when I was in school. <laughs> so then when I went to college at Western Michigan, they had like uh, I'd go to the comedy night once a month. They had a once a month comedy night. I'd go every month. Um, and then they were like, the last one of the semester is like a talent show. So I was like, oh, well I should do that. So <laughs> I called the number to sign up and they were like, all right, well, can I hear your actor? And I was like, I don't have that yet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so like, yeah, I spent like two months working on that, you know, and then. What was, what was that like? Like, how did you form ideas and like, like um, how did you form the jokes? I out, like, from nothing? um. I went online, and I think this is, like, pre-Google, but I used, like, some search engine. It was just, like, stand-up comedy, <laughs> how to start stand-up comedy. And I, I remember the site was, like, soyouwanna.com, and you could, like, and it had, like, you could say, hey, I want to learn how to do this, and it would give you, like, steps. And so I read about, like, how to start stand-up comedy. I, I, like, took notes on that. I was taking like a public speaking class for, you know, one of my like fine arts credits. <laughs> so like I kind of took some of the things I learned in that class and applied that. And then uh, I saw they were referencing a book called Zen and the Art of Stand Up Comedy. So I like ordered that. I think, you know, Amazon existed, but I didn't have, you know, didn't have a credit card or anything. <laughs> so I like went to like the bookstore in town, like, Hey, can you order this book for me? Oh and <laughs> like they got it. And kids today will <laughs> never understand. <laughs> yep. Read that book and, you know, then got ready and did, you know, I did that. Um, so it was a talent show. And, um, <laughs> like when I think back on it, like I know the, the it was like students were running it or whatever. So they, 
kept asking like, what's your, what's your act about? And I was like, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm still <laughs> writing it. You know, like this is just something I wanted to try. Um, so I think they were like worried that, well, <laughs> was I going to do something like, <laughs> you know, offensive or, <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure if I got off the stage two minutes in or something, cause I, I didn't know how much time to tell them it was going to take or anything. Right. Um, you didn't practice beforehand. Or but I practiced like in my dorm room and like, I had like a few people like, Hey, can you watch this and tell me if you think it's good? And <laughs> they'd give me uh-huh. like feedback. And so I think I ended up going like second to last and there was like a band setting up, you know, to go on after me. So I just like riffed about that for a second. Like I saw <laughs> I got, like a band, you know, um, I, you know, it's just like, uh, I don't, I'm trying to think. Like I, I think I did maybe do do some political jokes because it was like the spring of 2001. So like George Bush was like the guy that stole the election. So was, <laughs> you know, dumb stuff about that and like um, just being like you know a freshman in college and you know and 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 then like I ended up winning that contest. Wow. <laughs> so so I was like, oh well, this is obviously something that you know I got to do now. Um, so the, <laughs> but then like, you know, I would, I came home for the summer and I kept trying to get time at like connections comedy club oh, that used okay. to be here. Um, and they had like one night was open mic night and they only booked like three people before like the regular show. So you had to call Monday at noon. They took the first three callers and I feel like I'd call every time and they was like, Oh, sorry, we already got our three. <laughs> so like I didn't, you know, get time and. Then, you know, I was trying to finish up school. I just kind of, like, gave up on doing it. And uh, I remember my mom was like, are you going to give up on this? Like, you liked it. And I was like, well, I'll, I could come back to it later, but I didn't know if I would. And then, yeah, it was like, so this is like 2001, 2002. And, uh, you know, graduated, did, like, you know, looking for a job, did a bunch of jobs and stuff. And then, you know, 2010, I started, like, thinking, you know, I, I need something – that's not work to like, you know, focus on. So, right. so that's when I decided to start up again and I got on the, the open mic at the club that I couldn't get on before. And <laughs> connections. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yep. So that was, uh, yeah. February of 2012. Wow. That's so cool. Yep. Wow. That's very interesting. So when you, so you essentially just learned on your own you didn't have vid- yeah. you didn't have videos you didn't have youtube to kind of ha- reference first you first time i didn't um i'd say in between like uh 2001 2002 to when i started again um i was still a fan of comedy but i i wouldn't say i like knew a lot of like the deeper i didn't my my knowledge didn't maybe go that deep like right. i knew like the big people right you know on tv were um and like a friend of mine at work mentioned he was listening to a podcast called Doug Loves Movies, which is like uh, Doug Benson, who's okay. a comedian. He had like people on to talk about movies. So I started listening to that and I liked it. And his guests were always comedians. So they'd be like, oh, I do this podcast. So I'd be like, oh, I'm going to listen to that one. So then <laughs> just like and listening to a ton. So you just swarmed yourself full of like just comedian stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then a lot of times people would say, well, when I started, I, you know, wrote my five minute set and I, you know, found an open mic and I did it and I kept doing them and, you know, kind of see how things changed and, you know, what feedback I got. So I was like, Oh, well, okay, I could do that. And, you know, so yeah, that just kind of like tried to take advice that I picked up or like little things I picked up from hearing other comedians talk about it. I know the first time I ever heard I mean, I don't know if it's the first time I ever heard a comedian, but the first time I, I remember like falling in love with comedy was uh, I heard Dane Cook and oh, we, yeah. I was my, I grew up in church, so yeah. it was extremely <laughs> strict. And we were on the on our way to Grand Rapids uh, with with the youth group, and um, it was like we were going to like a Griffins game or something something. Yeah, uh, I think it was like an arena football game or something. Um, but one of the guys that was in the group had his iPod and he was oh. playing Dane Cook and it was, uh, it was, I don't know if you heard all his stuff, but I know I listened it, to like the first couple albums. So okay. Yeah, yeah. He has a joke about cheating and he's like talking about how, and he came home and he sticks the keys in and it sounds like you're sticking it in a stereo. <laughs> and then, you know, you're walking across the wooden floors and it's like screech, screeching and 
saying liar cheater (laughs) and oh my gosh i remember falling in love that was the first like that was like the first time i remember hearing comedy and be like wow that is that's like i love that and uh yeah then from there i just i paid attention to comedy i was oh yeah and even now to this day like i any comedy show i I try to go to because that I love them. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen my shirt. I wore it yeah. because of you. I went this I got this at a comedy show. <laughs> it's it's uh, Chris Lane or yeah, Chris Lane, I believe. I'll have uh, to check that out. He's a comedian. Um that we seen my wife and I seen him at um uh what's the one in uh Columbus? The funny bone. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um he was with Mark Norman. Okay. Yeah. And uh he's a he's a veteran and so that's kind of why he did that. Um yeah. but it's don't tread on comedy. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, it was, I think he made it at a time where like comedians were kind of getting attacked for saying certain things. Yeah, some, so, some have, yeah. 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 Um, have you experienced any of that? Not really. Cause I, I, I'm usually not doing stuff that I guess anybody, people would be offended <laughs> by. Like I've actually joked about that. Cause I have like, uh, my uncle likes that I do comedy, but he'll like ask me like, Oh, do you feel like you can talk about like whatever you want? Are people too sensitive? And I just like, I don't know. I, 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 I feel like that's kind of like, you know, maybe not the best argument to have. But I was like, well, you know, I, I have like a bit about how my house has a light, has a room with lighthouse wallpaper. Like nobody's going to cancel me for that. <laughs> like, <laughs> Have you had any like hecklers or anything like that? I mean, I think from time to time, I can't think of anything like majorly where I had to like keep fighting someone. I, I <laughs> right. Mean, I guess I'm lucky in that sense. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now you've performed at some, uh, like you performed at the the Bob, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I seen that. Uh, actually, I might have seen you there. Okay. Yeah, I might have seen you there. Um, I mean, I know I filled in for the the because they have a house MC usually. I I know okay. I filled in a couple times if they were doing other shows or couldn't do, you know, the weekend. Um, then yeah, I won a a contest there in 2019, the the funniest person Grand Rapids contest. Oh, so, cool. Yeah. Have yeah. you have you performed at any other like uh, bigger clubs or anything? Uh, pretty regularly at Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase. Okay, I feature I've there, never been there a couple weekends a year. So um, I've been at like Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle in Royal Oak. Uh, just last month, so like May of 2022, was uh, I opened for Gary Goldman at the Michigan wow. Theater. So that was that was pretty. That was like my first like big theater show. What was that like? That was awesome. Um, were you nervous? <laughs> yeah. Cause I, well, like I worked with Gary at the comedy showcase like mm. uh, three years before that, um, and he liked you know he liked me enough that he was doing a show the next week at the Magic Bag and asked if I wanted to open for him there. So I did that. It's like that kind of like it's a little black box theater in uh, okay. Ferndale. Okay. It's like right between Ferndale and Royal Oaks. I think it's on the Ferndale side. But um, so I did that. And, um, you know, I thought it went fine. And, you know, I but I didn't keep in touch with them or anything over like <laughs> the pandemic and getting back into it. And then it was like uh, the Friday of like Easter weekend. I was getting ready to go up north and I checked my email. I had like email from someone I didn't recognize, but it was like open for Gary Goldman May, tw- you know, May 11th. And it was like, oh, okay. It's like, <laughs> and it was oh. like from his his management company asked if I wanted to do it. So I wrote back like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. You know, <laughs> and I, how does that work? Do you have to be like recommended to? Or I think he asked them to email me. I okay. think he probably ha- he must have had my email address from like when he asked me to do the show at the Magic Bags. I know okay. I had to like email someone like a you know text form or something for right. that. Um, so yeah, I, I I I'm sure it can be. Some people might have like agents or something that would be reaching out and saying, "Hey, yeah. would you let my client open for your client?" That kind of thing. Right. I think in my case, it was. I think Gary is probably like messaging people for shows, like you know, if he's going to be in like Louisville, for example, he's like, "Oh, do I know anybody there?" Or you know, ask for like recommendations or whatever. Yeah, yeah that's actually a good move. Yeah. yeah, get get some comedian local comedians uh, contact information, and whenever you're in town, just yep, yeah, that's really good. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. So like, um, you know, I I agreed to do it, but then I was just like, well, um, I think the email was you know nice. He was like, well, Gary's audience prefers like a somewhat clean show. He's like, <laughs> you can, you know, language isn't, isn't the biggest problem. Don't do any like graphic sexual material. And I was like, well, I don't usually do that anyway, but 
Um, so I just like thought about like what jokes would I want to make sure I did on like a big stage like that and what things, you know, would I maybe, if I, if I was questioning it, then <laughs> probably just don't do it. You know, that was kind of my, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Now when you're writing jokes and when you're formulating like, uh, I don't like, do you typically do like 10 minutes or 15 minutes or it can depend. Uh, you know, most open mics are like seven minutes or so. Some, okay. some, some of them are as low as like three or five. I think, and yeah, I don't think there are any, any major ones that are only three, but you know, sometimes, <laughs> you know, like, so how do you, be. how do you formulate your jokes? Like in that situation, um, where you, you had to go pick jokes that you wanted, how do you transition between, like, are they around the same topic generally? I try to try to organize things so that it kind of has, like, at least may, it makes sense in my head of how it's going to flow together. Like, you know, I mean, I have some things that I'm just like, all right, well, I can just take a pause and, you know, go into, you know, the setup for this next thing. You know, that's fine. But, you know, um, yeah, I guess I, I try to I try to make it flow if I can, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Now, who's your favorite comedian? I have a lot. Of, I, I mean, I, I'm a big fan. I am a big fan of Gary Goldman, like I was before I worked with him. Yeah. Um. So he's big. Um, like like Jimmy Pardo. Um. Uh, I really liked like Daniel Tosh back in the oh day. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I, I haven't kept up with some of his more recent stuff, but you know, I think like his first couple albums are pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, um, he had an incident where he he got canceled. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, I'm sure because he was, you know, doing the the Tosh Point oh show. I feel like yeah. sometimes that. Well, it was actually in a comedy club. Somebody was. Uh, he was. T- I think he was talking about rape. Oh or yeah. Something. Oh yeah, I remember that. That was you know that was a while ago. I remember like yeah. Count there was like, I'd heard that, <laughs> that an open mic was like because of this everybody should tell a rape joke tonight. <laughs> and I was like, if I was on that show, I'd be like, no, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. The Tosh Point o, Tosh Point o show, though, that is a hilarious show. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I sometimes shows like that can, like, get old after a while yeah. or whatever, but I think yeah. he's funny, so, yeah. yeah. You know, he's definitely funny. Um, my favorite uh, show, I guess, kind of like that, but it, it's different, is Kill Tony. Yeah, um, I think that's pretty cool because you can kind of see some of the up and coming comedians. And I, I tried it because I've always like I always wanted to do stand up. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I like I'll watch it. and I'm like, OK, I see how they did that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just scared of I, bombing. Like how they bomb. I'm, I'm not like a regular viewer of it. I did. I'm I, not was at a, I was at um, uh, Motor City Comedy Festival one year when they had Kill Tony. Oh, cool. So I was like hanging out in the back and I did put my name in the bucket, but I was like, I don't even know what this is. Like, <laughs> and then, like I saw the people got picked and it's like, so I mean, I, I'm sure the episode's available. It's like the one they did in Detroit and they had uh, Danny Brown. Okay. Um, <laughs> so he was wow. like one of the guest judges and, but like, I don't know, he said a lot of stuff I couldn't really repeat. But it was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Was that when they went to Lansing, Grand Rapids, and then Detroit? I think they did. I think they did come yeah. through here, and then yeah, Grand Rapids, and then they're they're showing Detroit with the festival. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's it's interesting to watch because uh, for me, for somebody who's never done comedy, mm-hmm. like I don't know how to like formulate jokes. So yeah, I like, I guess my issue with it is just like it's hard enough to try it for the first time. You know, because, I mean, I feel like people's first times, there's like, man, everything was hitting really good. And I, you know, thought I felt comfortable and I was ready to do it. And then your second set will be terrible. Or it'd be like, <laughs> oh, it was so bad. I, I, I wanted to, I didn't want to do it again, but I made myself do it. And then maybe it gets better from there. But right. It, yeah. Well, I mean, just, I just like, like anything and everything gets better when you continuously do it. Yeah. I mean, I could see like. Some people maybe have like traumatic enough first time. They're just like, well, yeah. I know I'm not doing that again. <laughs> right. Know? Right. Yeah. That's true. But that's true. Um, I, I just can't imagine like if I, if I was trying it for the first time 
and it didn't go well, and then people made fun of me for it. I just, <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I wouldn't sign myself up for that, but I know yeah. that there's people who. Yeah, I guess you know it. what you're getting into if you sign, sign yeah, up. Yeah, right? and I, I feel like like the, whoever's in that bucket, it could be somebody who does it regularly, like, you right. know, or it could be someone trying it for the first time. I just don't know <laughs> if that public of a, of a you know, stage where you're going to get feedback that might be pretty mean if you were bad. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I. I mean, I don't think it would be enough for me to d- get discouraged to not do it again. But knowing that, like, they're big, big comedians, yeah, and then they're just bashing you, like, hmm, I don't know if I could do this. Yeah, I don't know if I w- I'm cut out for it. Yeah, that could be a thought. Because I mean, it's like sometimes new comp, you know, like it's it's hard. It's hard to learn how to do this and like. I, I think probably I, I've had a lot of bad sets. I've had good ones. You know, I feel like I'm at a point now where, you know, I do pretty good. But, um, you know, you'll still have <laughs> still have bad nights. I would hate to, like, right. you know, yeah. have someone, you know, hold it against me for having a bad set. So, <laughs> <you know. laughs> yeah, that guy sucked. Yeah. <laughs> no. Whenever I see a comedian that's not that funny, I'm like, hmm. Like, they're still working on it. Yeah. You got to give them credit. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like sometimes, like, comedians will know, like, someone's been at it for a long time, and they never get better, and they never, but they never, like, try, you know, try things to get better. Like, right. you know, sometimes, you know, if you, someone starts out not strong, but they're working on it, and like, okay, they're still, they still have a lot of work to do, yeah. but they're trying, they'll... They'll be fine, but you know sometimes it's just like you've been doing this for like as long as me, and you're still struggling. I don't know. <laughs> like, what do you think that is? Is is it that they're not getting up enough? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that could be part just of it. Maybe not cut out for it. Like, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I I don't. You can make the argument that maybe it's like a pretty tough art to try to master. So some yeah. people might not be cut out for it. But what's yeah. crazy about it is how everybody does it differently. And yeah. so there's really no, like, way of knowing how to do it. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I, there's books out there. I know that. They're, like, there's uh, the comedy Bible. I, yeah. I, I have I, that. I know I have that. I, I don't think, I, I think I read through it, but I don't think I did that much with that one. Yeah. I really like the Zen and the Art of Stand-Up Comedy book. But I'm going to write that down. That's from, like, the late 90s, so I think it's kind of, you know, it might. It, I think it probably would have good information, but it's not like <laughs> you know. What is it called? The Zen of com- Zen and the Art of Stand Up Comedy. Oh. It's like a play on. There's that old book, The Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Um, I think yeah, that book kind of just has like a brief mention of the internet. Like that's how, <laughs> how old it is. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I, I grew up with like dial up and all that. Oh, and yeah. it's just it's yeah, so crazy <laughs> like how everything just changed so much. I mean like now I have a direct hook hook up. You don't have to hear the doo, 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 like you know. Yep. Just it's wild. Wild. Different times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like tell tell chill. Yeah, someone had to scream at us and then we could get online. <laughs> yeah, and you have to yeah, you have to get off the off the internet. Yeah, and that when tell somebody calls, hang up and, the phone. Yep, or, yeah, yeah, yep. it's such a pain. It's so crazy how quickly innovation happens. Yeah, yeah, it's wild, wild times. Um, so as far as like finding like comedy gigs, do you have to search for those type of things yourself, or do you have like a manager that um, you? Yeah, I'm doing most of it myself. I feel like yeah, there some people get managers, but I I guess not at the level I'm at because you know, I'm still doing it part time. Okay. Know? Um. How often do you do it? I, on social media, it looks like you're doing it every weekend. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a run of like three weekends in a row, so like oh, this okay. was like an off weekend for me, and like <laughs> I was just kind of like just hoping to get through with nobody asking me to do more. Because like, sometimes you just need that for like. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, even though it's something I'm sure you like to do, yeah. it's still work in a sense. Yep. Yeah, because you got to be there at a certain time. And yeah, and you got to, you know, I like to try to think about what I'm going to talk about, you know, and, and like I think last week I was, uh, I mean, last week, uh, last weekend I had a Friday show in Detroit at the new Detroit House of Comedy that opens, like the official opening is this weekend, but they were doing like previous shows. So. Oh, okay. So I was doing like a 15 minute set there, but, you know, I was like, I want to do well because it's like the new club and, yeah. you know, if I 
can get work there. And then um, uh, then the next night I was at uh, doing a show in Kalamazoo doing like 45 minutes. And then it's like, all right, so I'm doing all that stuff I did last night plus more. And I got to, you know, like I, I think like right before the pandemic I had done 45 a couple times. So I was like, okay, it's something I can do. But then, you know, two years where I didn't do it. So it's just <laughs> like trying to remember how. And then, you know, I've been doing it a while. So it's like, I don't want to do, don't want to do jokes that maybe don't ring as true or I don't mm, care yeah. as much about just to fill time. So yeah. yeah it's just So how often are you writing new jokes? I, mean, I could definitely do that more, but um, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like, seems like ideas have to hit me and then I'll be like, Oh yeah, I want to talk about that. Um, so. Is it something you're constantly thinking about? Cause that's like something for me, whenever I'm doing something like the podcast, um, mm-hmm. I, I'll see somebody or I'll talk to somebody interesting. I'm like, I'm going to have them on the podcast. Like I'm, yeah, I yeah. need to remember to reach out to them or like, that's an idea. I need to talk about that on the podcast. Or is there always things constantly running through my head? Yeah. Is that something that's same for you? That's kind of, um, cause some people are really good at, I sit down every day and I write stuff and like maybe I'll turn some of it into jokes. Like I know they'll sometimes people say like, if you just like journal, eventually you'll be, you could write something that you could turn into a joke. Like, mm. so if your your goal is to just start writing something, you know, but I was like, I, I've never, never made myself do that. Um, I feel like when, you know, I kind of like pretty quickly, as far as like Michigan comics, they were like, you, you're like, like they liked my writing. So it'd be like, I might not be as like prolific to have new stuff all the time, but when I do have something new, people like it. Um, but then, you know, so I don't know, there's, there's so many ways to approach <laughs> doing that. that yeah. Sometimes I wish I could like come up with new stuff all the time, but yeah, you know, probably doing enough to like keep, you know, like if I do, I'm at Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase where I'm there a lot. I try to do new stuff, work new stuff in. So it's like if I have enough to do like a new chunk in my 20 minute set every time I'm there, like I'm happy with that. But, um, you know, open mics, I don't want to just do <laughs> the old stuff all the time. So, right. yeah. Um, now you work full time too, don't you? Yeah. How, how is that? Like having coworkers, are they, do they expect you to be funny? <laughs> I mean, I, I was pretty, I mean, I guess I'm an introvert in like <laughs> life outside of comedy. So people are usually like surprised. I'm like, what? You're the guy that doesn't talk much. And I was like, well, I'm working. I'm, you know, I think at work and I work that kind of like right from when I started, like you can listen to music on headphones and f- to focus on your work. So it's like, that's where I would do a majority of my podcast listening. Right. You know, yep. like, um, where do you work at? Uh, <laughs> are you allowed to, you can't say, I, I think I could say, but I don't, you know, just to yeah. be, <laughs> what kind of work do you do? I'm like a supply chain office, office okay. kind of work. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I work at uh general motors and it's okay. assembly line work. Yep. And, um, so we can have headphones too. And that's when I listen to podcasts like yep. all day, every day. Yeah. And yeah, audiobooks. I, I listen to a lot of audiobooks too, but yep. Yeah. i done you know, have it like my audiobook phase and then yep. you know like i don't know i just feel like so many there's so many podcasts now and you'll like listen to one and they'll be like this podcast on the same network I'm like oh that sounds interesting and then <laughs> suddenly you're just like listening to those and maybe neglecting something else and, yeah there's, <laughs> there's always a ton just downloaded on my phone oh, <laughs> like, i know when, yeah it takes up so much space too you gotta yeah. go through and delete them unsubscribe yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's so frustrating yeah. Um, so do you have any upcom- upcoming events or anything like that? I just seen you were yeah. in Mason last weekend too, right? Yeah, I was at the Rooted Reverence okay. Festival. So, yeah, they asked me to do that. I didn't know how that was going to be because, you know, it's like comedy in the daytime outside. Yeah, that was that's um, interesting. How was that? It was it was good. They told me that it had to be, like, somewhat family-friendly too. So I was <laughs> like, it's not that I'm – I'm not that dirty, but, you know, <laughs> I don't want – like, I was like, okay, well – there's kids around, I guess I got to like really, you know, be conscious of that. Yeah. But, you know, I just thought about it and then like, um, it turned out it went pretty well. It was like, you know, it's like, I had like a sm- there, there, there weren't like, you know, tons of chairs set up as like one of their outside stages. They like set up the stage in the middle of the street on like, <laughs> uh, Jefferson and Maple street in Mason. Okay. And I used to live in one of those loft apartments above oh, the, wow. um, the antique mall. <laughs> so okay. I was like, 
I used to live like right there, like uh, as I'm performing, like that's crazy. Um, some people I went to high school with showed up, so that was cool to see that's them. Cool. Uh, and so they brought, they brought two, two of their kids. So I was like, well, you know, I, and I cleaned it up and like, I don't know. The, so I was like, all right, I guess I can do family friendly. Uh, people seem to like it. They were, you know, people were walking, like just walking down the street afterwards. People were like, oh, you were great. Yeah. That's so cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Um, now are you part of the opportunity arts? I've done stuff. Well, I mean, I, so I've done shows artist umbrella. Okay. But I, I know Allison Spooner from yeah. when, uh, she was on your podcast. Yeah. I think the, yeah. the only episode I've listened to. Sorry. <laughs> I, I did want to listen to a few before no, I did it. So I kind of know like what, what to format. expect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I met her. She used to work at bestsellers in Mason. I mean, okay. I'd stop in every time, every day before work to go get, you know, a chai tea and, you know, uh. something. And so, so I knew her. Um, so she had me do some of the, their shows. Uh, did some of the live ones at the loft before everything shut down. Yeah. Did some of the outdoor ones, and um, so I know a lot of the opportunity arts people from there. But I, I don't think I, I haven't joined or anything officially. <laughs> okay. Um, have you? I, I know the loft is like a. It's called the four one four or something. Yeah, like that. they changed the name. Or do they still do comedy there? Because I know I've for heard a little they've bit they've done they... some occasional stuff. Yeah. Um, I know that they're that's booked by like uh uh entertainment agency um, so i don't know if they did more maybe i'd have a chance but yeah <laughs> yeah i i went to one um one show there and it was actually pretty good but it was weird because like it didn't feel like a comedy club it's not the greatest venue for comedy i've no. seen i saw kyle canane there like seven years ago Oh, cool um i think uh, i've seen him at the funny bone before yeah. yeah yeah he's great um that'd be another one of my favorites um so, yeah, I don't know. It's not the best best venue for comedy, but, you know, if they were doing shows there and <laughs> offered me, I guess I would try, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, I mean, the comedians that were there were funny. They yeah. were really good, but the environment was strange because <laughs> they were, like, passing out, um, like, chips, like bags of chips oh, and popcorn. Yeah. Um, you could get liquor there, but it was weird because the bar is right there. Mm-hmm. Um, and but the tables that you were sitting at were like these big round yeah, plastic tables yeah. and like metal folding chairs. It's like this is I don't know, it's strange. Kind of need like I feel like comedy's really good in like intimate spaces, which I know yeah. that's maybe hard to do with you know with the virus, but um, yeah, low definitely. ceilings are good. You know, like yeah, but that's what I liked about the Bob so much yeah. is like it's so intimate, but it felt kind of spacious at the same time. Mm-hmm. They'd fit a lot of people in there. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know, know they're reopening in the fall. I seen that. Yeah. Are they opening the comedy club yeah, too? Yeah. Oh, very cool. I'm so excited because I was sad when that closed down. Yeah. I've seen um Brad Williams there. Uh, right before they shut down, I, I went and seen Greg Fitzsimmons. Okay. Yep. Um. I've seen uh, Chris Porter there. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Yeah, I love that club. Yeah, well, I'll be back. Yeah, yeah I can't September. wait. I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, is there any other clubs kind of like that in, in Michigan? I mean, I, would, I feel like every club in Michigan, they're kind of like unique in their own ways. I would, I would, I, I really like Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase. I would say check that out because, I mean, if you're – you're driving an hour to Grand Rapids, just drive an hour the different way to get yeah. to Ann Arbor. Yeah. Um, they've got a really nice club. I Is guess. it like a um like a theater type setting? No, I mean it, it's like uh I think it's like I guess kinda has like an internal bowl and then like kinda a couple more levels it goes back. It's Okay. Yeah. So it's pretty big. Um I think you fit a couple hundred there if oh, they wow. were at capacity. Okay. Um, yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, I've always wanted to check them out. I just, I just haven't. It's good. Yeah. That's, I, th- I think, I think like when we lost connections here and then they tried to do a comedy club at Trippers and that yeah. lasted like a year and a couple months. Why didn't that one work out? Do you know? Well, I know Trippers closed too. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of, <laughs> a lot of places, a lot of times places will be like, we're struggling Comedy will save us, mm. but it's like comedy, it's it's tough. It's not an easy business. Like I think a lot of these clubs that have been around for for decades, they figured out how to how to adjust with the times. Because right. it's like in the eighties, there was like the comedy boom where everybody at like there were comedy clubs and every restaurant yeah. did comedy and right. there were tons of comedians. And then 
things kind of cooled off in the nineties. It was like the mid nineties. It was like, that was like the last thing people wanted to do. Uh, it was tough and, you know, some places adjusted and some places didn't and they closed and, um, I don't like trippers. I don't, I mean, I don't want to like talk bad about them after, <laughs> after they're gone, but I think, I don't, I don't think people knew it was there. Like I connect, didn't know it was there. Like connections is problem was they were on like the North side of Lansing and there's not a lot out there. Yeah. Um, and it used to be, and you got to drive. Yeah. And it used to be like before 127 got built, everybody had to take that to go north. So you'd pass oh. by, and that was like prime location. But once a highway cuts you, <laughs> cuts you That's off, a good point. nobody's going to, nobody's driving out that way. So you're not, you're not seeing like, right. hey, a comedy club, let's go. Right. Um, and then, you know, I think it's just, you know, tough business. And I, I, I've, I've heard that <laughs> the owner, Maybe made a deal for some tax relief, to, oh. and that kind of ended up like, "Hey, I'm just you know, I'm just shutting it down." I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't want to say that's for sure what happened. Right, right. Just a lot of factors, and then I think what Trippers Trippers was in a decent location, you know, in Frandor that had yeah. some traffic, and it's you know close to East Lansing, close to downtown. People could get there, but I think I would I would work weekends there hosting. People would just be like, well, I heard about it on the radio, and I didn't even know you guys were here, and so I wow. got free tickets, and I came, and then like, but did they ever come back? Did they tell anybody? Right. I just, like right. there was like, yeah, you know, like people knew what Trippers was. They didn't know that they had like built a comedy club inside. Yeah, I didn't know that at all. Yeah, and they had like a, a side room that they just made into a, like a decent space for comedy, and then but. Like they could have put us if they put a sign up, people yeah. would have yeah. <laughs> like, "Hey, comedy yeah. on the weekends or whatever." <laughs> like, have you been to that one comedy club? I think they shut down now, but um, on the west side, I uh, I did not go there. No, I went there um once with my wife, and it was like dead winter, and their heat had just gone out, God. and uh, so they had like space heaters in there, and then uh. The com the comedians were actually funny, okay. but there wasn't yeah. that many people in there, and yeah. it, it was an interesting setting because it's a theater, obviously. Mm-hmm. So it's like theater seats and everything. And that um, can work. That it could work, good. but it has the high ceiling, so it's like yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's strange. It's a little strange, but um, there was only like a handful of people in there, so like it didn't feel like like comedy. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. It was interesting. There was like some. There's some drama with uh, people that were running that, and I, I I don't feel like I was involved in it, but like I kind of see kind of like like some of my some of comedians in Lansing I know would like ask about doing time there, and the responses were always like super rude, and oh, man. um I always was kind of like you know. I, I, when I saw like what was going on, I was like, "Well, I don't think I'm going to check that out." But yeah, <laughs> I'd tell yeah. any, I, I would tell anybody else like, if you can get stage time, do it. Um, and I never bad mouthed them. I didn't want it to like fail, right? You know, but yeah, I was, I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna wait and see on that one. See how it works out." <laughs> yeah. Clearly, it didn't work out. Yeah, which is sad. I, I, I really want. A, we need something. We need I, something. Yeah. Why don't we have anything? Like, it's, this is the capital city. <laughs> I don't know. Like, we need something, like, at least in, like, MSU area. Yeah. Like, yeah. if there was a club down there, I believe it would do great. I think it would, too. Yeah. Especially I, with, like, open mic nights with college kids. Like, like I think the area where Trippers was trying to do it could, that's like a, that's like a good area for it because it's pretty close to, it's pretty close to campus. Yeah. And, and you can drive there, park. Yep. And then yeah. you could leave your car there if you needed overnight yep. if yep. you get too drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 i don't know and that was another thing too about the comedy club on the west side is you couldn't drink they didn't have an alcohol license yeah. so like you're just i don't know you know <laughs> yeah, no that's yeah i mean i i don't drink that much i'm not like never drink or whatever but yeah i, I just don't i don't drink that much but i know that for some people like going out to the comedy club they want a couple of beers or a yeah. cocktail or two and especially because like generally when you go to a comedy club it's you have to buy a drink yeah, or two have, like two drink minimums or right. which i don't agree with but you no know, why yeah. not i don't know like you know you're, you're getting people in there you know if they're pay if they're if they're paying for their tickets i think that's like money you can count on for you know don't be like and well, once you're in here, you got to spend at least you yeah, know yeah. ten more dollars or whatever it is. And yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, I guess I, I get it though. Like for me, I guess I would, I appreciate it enough to where like, I'm like, I would pay whatever to watch yeah. comedy, but I get why somebody would be like, I don't really want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and someone who doesn't drink, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I guess I play some place, like, all right, well, we'll just charge you for two bottled waters or whatever. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what do you do? I, they also, they obviously have to make money too, but they do. yeah, it's it's kind of so like a movie theater, I think, right? Like most of the ticket probably. sales go to the comedian, uh, and then yeah, I don't know how all that works, but I don't yeah, know. I don't it's know probably either. different from place to place. A lot of times, what comedy clubs will do to get people in there, if it's light, you know, they're hey, we aren't selling a lot of tickets this weekend. They'll just be like, they'll do contests, contests in oh, quotation yeah. marks, where <laughs> you know, like they'll post on like the social media, but like we have a trivia question. You know, if you answer it, you can get some tickets, and it'll be something super easy. So they just be like, <laughs> like, I think we'd joke, like, what day is it? Tell us what day it is to get two free tickets. <laughs> but, yeah. So, I mean, I guess if, if they're not paying to get in, then the club's like, well, we got to get something. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, yeah, I don't know. But, but maybe they, I wouldn't, like, if I ran a club, I don't know if I'd do drink minimums, but I'd try to, like, charge maybe have a low ticket fee so we're not we're not like papering the room which is like the mm. term for giving people free tickets okay like we're we're not doing that but you know the ticket price is only 10 bucks so most people aren't gonna be upset about that you're and not then, gonna go broke trying yeah. to find yeah and then you know i'm not gonna make them order two drinks but maybe if we have like a good reasonably priced drink menu and food menu they'll buy stuff on their own and yeah yeah, yeah. i mean that would be ideal yeah. Yeah. Now, you also do comedy at a place in East Lansing, don't you? Yeah, I started helping out with uh, the a new comedy, like, open mic at Beggar's Banquet okay. on Thursdays. Yeah. How is that? What is that environment like? It's like, it's a restaurant, right? Yeah, Beggar's Banquet's like, uh, it's a restaurant that's been there since, like, the 70s. So it's like, you know, I, I think it's like, has some, like, fine dining options. Like, they have, like, steaks and seafood that stuff that can be a little more high end but then they also have like you know burgers and stuff so okay it's like and it, everything i've eaten there is good um they have like a big like banquet room attached to it that they will rent out for like events but i think it was just like open some nights so they wanted to try to do comedy there oh. uh elena bamfield who runs a show with me works at beggar's banquet you know so they talked to her she wanted to do it and i just you know, said I'd help out. So do they do like open mic type things there? Or they just book comedians already? Know. Well, I mean, we're Elaine and I are doing like the booking for the, oh, the comedy okay. portion. I, I don't, I mean, I think it's like this kind of like banquet room that can hold like you know, 10 tables has a bar, you know, so it's like, Hey, you know, people might be having like want to have like an open, like a graduation dinner or something. You yeah. Know, use that space. Okay. So, you know, okay. if it's sitting open, if it's sitting open most nights, you know, they just wanted to kind of try to do something to yeah. see if they could get some people coming in. and Right. Yeah. And that's a good spot, too. I mean, oh, yeah. it's in East Lansing. D- is it busier during when, like, the college kids are there? It was definitely, I feel like the first week, like, after school was over, we had, like, a, you know, kind of dip in attendance. But we've had some, some weeks since then have been pretty good. Yeah. You know, like, I know... They're trying to promote the show more. They have like little flyers they're putting out, and oh, cool! People are like, because it's like I don't, East Lansing right now has like that fresco zone. I don't know if you've seen that. No, they no, like blocked it? off part of. Um, oh yeah, behind. Yeah, you know, Be- like behind, like uh, the uh, Jolly Pumpkin and all that. Like, yeah, like that street is blocked off for like a couple blocks, so like people can eat outside and there's, that's cool. Like, stuff for kids to play and stuff. So. Uh, I know Elena and uh, some of her coworkers have been like writing on the chalk in chalk on the sidewalk around there, like comedy show at Beggar's Banquet Thursday night. You know, <laughs> wow, that's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I've always wanted to open a comedy club here in town. Oh yeah, <laughs> but it's just like one of those things. I'm not in that community. Like I don't really know what like the talent of comedians are like here in Lansing. I do know that there's quite a few. Yeah, there's there's a lot of us. There's there's some good people. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you pretty good friends with most of them? Most of them, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, are they are they pretty good? Are they pretty? Yeah, good there's comedians? there's really good people. Yeah, yeah. Robert Jenkins, Nick Lydorf. 
Um, I follow some of them. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I feel like I, I don't want to list too many and have you like, didn't list the you know, Obi. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You forgot about me, you asshole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's really good people here. Um, I think like comedy clubs, if, if, if one did open up here, like, like most of the time, like your headliner is going to be someone that's traveling and they might bring like a feature act with them, you know, or, you know, it's whoever books it is probably, you know, so your most of your show is probably not going to be that local. You might get like someone in town or in the state for hosting, um, so, uh, but then like, you know, if a club opened up, I'd like understand, Hey, you're probably not having like local people be he- your headliner or your feature yeah. most of the time, but maybe you could have an open mic night for us you know, yeah. so we could, you know, grow. And then you'd see us and be like, Oh, so-and-so they're getting better now. Maybe I should give them some, some work hosting or, you know, okay, yeah. Um, now you're, you're pretty, you're pretty regular at most clubs, right? I mean, I try to be. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what club would you say you perform the most at? Would it be Ann Arbor? Uh, as far as comedy clubs, yeah. Okay. That would be, yep. Um, and uh, I know I asked you earlier, but we didn't, I, I don't know if we, I think we got, went on a different <laughs> yeah, subject. Yeah, went on but some tangents. <laughs> do, you, do you have uh, any re- upcoming shows or anything like that? Uh, I would say I wanted to plug the Thursday show at Beggar's Banquet. Um, it's most Thursdays. I don't, so I don't know when this is going to air this week. Um, okay. That's we funny. have to take a couple weeks in, J- in July off. Uh, the restaurant has events. So, okay. um, there's going to be shows on the 30th, the 7th and the 14th, but then there'll be like the rest of July will be off. So, um, I'm actually going to be out of town for all those shows, so Lane's going to be running them. But uh, I'll be back at I'll be back in August when they start up again at at Beggars. Um, but yeah, that's that's like that's a pretty good show. Uh, I I want to make sure to promote that. <laughs> um, and then um, I'm helping run two shows at Bad Brewing in Mason, uh, August 17th and September 28th. Okay. Uh, it'll be, I think they've usually had us outdoors in their like outdoor seating area, and it's usually been a good time. So cool. Yeah. That is really cool. Now, do you go to many comedy shows, many other comedy shows that you're not performing in? I try to. I I don't know. I think you know, I do a lot of performing. So sometimes like going out and seeing comedy isn't maybe not like <laughs> the top of my list of things right. to do for for entertainment. But you know. If it's like someone I know, like a friend of mine is trying to is it has a big show, I'll try to go to that. Uh, if it's a comedian I like a lot, I want to see what they're doing. You know, do that. Yeah. Sometimes it's like seeing somebody can it like they'll inspire you to like you know oh they did this and maybe I can try to do something yeah <laughs> or might flare an idea like yeah like oh I I can I can run off of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got to be careful with doing that. Right, but. right. No, but you might have a different idea, right? Yeah, yeah. That's associated to that subject. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and sometimes just I, th- I think, I think it's good if you want to do comedy or uh, probably anything. Like, just try to be aware of like what's going on with that. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, yeah. That's got to be difficult knowing like if somebody else made that joke before. Yeah, I mean, I, I I guess that's something you can <laughs> find out. Sometimes that's just like parallel thinking. Where yeah, you're like, yeah. You know, like if someone in someone in another state I've never been to has a joke that's similar to mine, it's like, well, I've never seen them. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I guess it really doesn't matter too much, right? Until it's kind of like once you do it on TV, it's kind of yeah, like yours. Matters. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, unfortunately, because, you know, you could be like, well, that is my joke. It was like, yeah, but they did it on TV. Yeah. And nobody's going to believe yeah. you that you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Now, aside from comedy, do you have any other hobbies or pastime? I, mean, I, I try to, I, I, I'm still a big comic book fan. Okay. So, you know, I've been doing that for a long time. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I think like, I think I've just been so busy with other stuff. It's like I go buy my comics and then I'll be like, Five days later, like, oh, I should probably read the ones I just bought. <laughs> like, like I'm, I think I'm probably going to do that after this. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's important to find like find time to enjoy things or to do things that you enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially when you're you're working full time and you have a hobby that takes a lot of time, too. Yes. Because yeah. um, 
like, I mean, for instance, this podcast takes me a lot of time mm-hmm. um, outside of my full time job. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you still have to find time to enjoy other other things. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it, your your calendar thing was a pretty good. That, I think that at it, least like frees you up from like getting <laughs> bogged down with people. Hey, can we change my time to this or? It does. You know, yeah. Yeah, be, I did that because um, at the beginning. I mean, up until recently, I would schedule all the podcasts myself. Mm-hmm. Like, I would try to work it with a guest. Like, okay, I'm available this time, this time. They're like, oh, that doesn't work for me. I got yeah, yeah. to do this time, this time. Yep. And it was kind of a pain. Like, most people want to do afternoons, which I get, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, nobody wants to do late at night or yeah, evenings. Yeah. Yep. But that's the only time that works for me, like, during the week. And then on the weekends, like, I might have something going on. So, yep. um. Yeah. So I had to do something. Yeah, when I was doing it, if we wanted to get people in the room to record, it'd be like, well, I'm I'm going to have to do it on a weekend, so we'll find, <laughs> see if you can do it in the morning or early yeah. afternoon or, yeah. So it, you do think you'll do another podcast? I've had ideas for them. I just don't know, like, what one to <laughs> run off of. <laughs> what are, like, you want to do, like, a comedy podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would definitely be more on the comedic side. Like, yeah. I listen to non-comedy podcast too but i you know haven't had like i'm, I'm probably not gonna do with like a true crime or something. <laughs> yeah those are kind of serious right like yeah you would have to and that takes a lot of research I've listened to good ones there's some good ones <laughs> just like just listen to this it's fucked up and then like you know weeks later so like yeah i finally listened to that I'm like oh i don't even remember all the details of that one like, it's impossible especially like when there's seasons and it's like one subject or yeah, one yeah. one crime or something like like i can't remember mm-hmm. it's kind of like um i was listening to the dropout with elizabeth holmes okay. a while ago and yeah. i had to check out because like you know it takes like a week to release an episode yep. and then you you forget all the details and it's like i don't even remember what happened yeah 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 and then like some things you'll like listening to it and you're like you know what i'm just gonna google what happened to that person and <laughs> yeah, then you're like yeah. wikipedia like all right so i know that they died and then you're like all right so <laughs> i guess i'll still listen to see like what, how what they're events? gonna tell me how they got to that right point. <laughs> right yeah the, I, I stopped listening to the crime podcast because i realized how fucked up this world is yeah like man this stuff is still happening <laughs> and it's happening like what's crazy it happens like in the midwest yeah. like ohio indiana mm-hmm. and like Actually, I think it was those two states. Like, it happens the most in it. it seems. I believe it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's all cornfields. People yeah. can just bury you easily. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> all right, man. Well, uh, is there anything else you want to talk about on the podcast? Um, I think. Um, I guess I can't think of anything unless you have I, more questions. Or <laughs> no, I feel like I asked you a lot about comedy, not like enough about yourself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But I, mean, I don't know, I guess. I, but I love comedy and I love like hearing. I mean, I've never I've never actually interviewed a comedian before. Okay. So like it's interesting to hear like how you do things and how you see things. And it would probably be way different, you know, if you got yeah. someone else in here. Yeah. 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 So yeah I'm trying absolutely. to think. So I'm assuming you've probably seen me at like artist umbrella related things or I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I came across you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm really not. Um, like I said, I might have seen you at the Bob before. That could be. Um, and I, I think I've seen you on social media somewhere, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna follow him because okay. he's a local comedian. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so yeah, I started following you, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna reach out to him. <laughs> yeah, hey, um, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I try to uplift local people and and help oh, them out yeah. and yeah, talk to them and. They're, You've had some good, good like friends of mine on, and I yeah, that, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's fun. It's a lot of fun too. So yeah, I'm planning on I'll listen to a few more. I'm always looking to know who's doing big things in Lansing. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not doing big things, but <laughs> <laughs> having people yeah. on who are doing stuff in the arts or you know, yeah, you know, local services, and I I think that's yeah, that's one thing. Like before I started doing this podcast, I didn't realize that there were so many um like artistic things in Lansing. Oh, yeah. Like it's just it's crazy because there's so many people doing so many different things, mm-hmm. and there's so many events and yeah. I think like so I I I grew up in Mason. And I think we, as we were talking up front, there's there's not a ton of that, <laughs> not not that often. Like I mean, even like the the 
what's going on in Mason Group? I remember after Rooted Reverence where I did like a set and I was so happy. Like, hey, I did something in my hometown and <laughs> it was great. I just like the next day, I'd be like, how come I didn't know anything about that? What is <laughs> this? Like, they were trying to get the word out. Like, I don't right, know. right. They were on the news. They, I think they posted <laughs> in this group. Like, oh like what gosh. more do they need to do? But like, I, and like, um, so like I lived in Lansing for like two years in like 2010 through 2012, and then I moved back to Mason to be closer to work and whatever. And then, uh, but I did move to the city of Lansing in 2019. I bought a house uh, east side, and I was super pumped. I was like, this neighborhood like has a lot of good like creative people. Yeah. Like I, you know, and so uh, yeah just kind of like seeing the talent that does exist here that's been that's been cool and like <laughs> it is really cool and everybody's supportive of everybody which is yep. really cool because like you don't have that like oh i need to be better than that person yeah mentality like yeah that's a loser's mentality but. yeah no i think like the local comedy scene i think we for the most part try to build each other up rather than like compete you yeah know? And yeah sometimes you you might see like someone getting good opportunities that you want yourself, but I've always just been like, well, I'm going to be happy for them that they got to do that. Not yeah. Like, <laughs> and they might pull you in at some point. Yeah. You know, yeah. I like, think like for the longest time, I was like the only comedian artist umbrella had. <laughs> so then oh, I'd wow. be like the only comedian with everybody else. <laughs> I have seen some of my friends doing shows for them now. So I'm like, hey, that's good. You know, I'm glad that I was able to, you know, set the tone that comics that comedy can work at these events and yeah. now other people get a chance to do that too. <laughs> that is but, very cool. That yeah. is cool. Well, thank you for doing this. It was yeah, a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Um, it was informative as for me anyways. Yeah. I'm like, maybe one day I will do comedy. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. And hopefully people, uh, yeah. <laughs> if anybody's sitting, listen to this, like, do I try comedy? I mean, yeah, just give it a try it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. No. Those people aren't going to remember you like a couple days from, no, from then. No, if definitely you suck. not. <laughs> I feel mean, even if you, if you do really well, people might not know who you might not remember you. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. That is very true. <laughs> That's a really good point. Yeah. I guess I just, you know, I, I'm sure you can plug social media stuff and the link of the episode, all that. Yep. So yep. yeah, all your links will be in the show notes. So, all right. Yeah. Well, thanks again for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for doing this. Mm-hmm.